God bless you and welcome to Impacting Your World with Ben and Joy. My name is Ben Simmons and this is my lovely wife, Joy. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are continuing talking about the power of the principle. We've been talking about this for a few weeks now and um, it's so uh, interesting when you start to see the effect of applying principles in your life, when you start to see the results. When you see one result, you're like, uh, I need to get another principle because that worked. And so that's what we're trying to get, um, get everyone that we come in contact to, to the point where the word of God becomes the thing that they live their right, lives right, by. That, right. That's the principle that they want to live their right. lives by. Just real quickly, just in case you are joining us for the first time, I want to give you the definition of a principle. It is a fundamental truth or proposition that serves as the foundation for a system of belief or behavior. It's a fundamental truth. Okay. So. We believe that the Bible is the basis for everything that we say and do, right. okay? And we believe that it's filled with fundamental truths that should be the foundation of our lives. And so what we've been talking about is actually taking those principles and using them in our lives to get a particular outcome or result. Many people, and perhaps you are one of those that are born again, you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And um, But sometimes what happens, we see people who accept Jesus Christ and they stop there. Right. And you gave a powerful example mm. in the last show about you enter into the door and you stop and don't move any further. Mm. Well, we want you to move further than just being born again. We want you to get to the point where you start practicing God's principles mm. and get the results in your life that you want, results of victory, right. of, of triumph, right. results of prosperity, results of healing and health and wholeness and, and wonderful families right. and peace in your right. life. Right. All those things come by actually using God's word as the foundation for your life, the principles for your life. So we want to pick up where we left off and we are looking at Romans, the 12th chapter. Verse two, which says, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That's the scripture we've been talking about. We've been talking about renewing your mind right, to right. the principles of God so that doing a principle becomes second nature. We were talking about um, a soft answer turns away wrath, but right. grievous words stir up strife as an example of a principle. Right. When you've renewed your mind to the point where that scripture becomes a part of you, then you see no strife in your life. Why? Because you automatically right. start responding with soft answers. You know, everybody else yelling and screaming around you, but you are responding with a what? Soft, soft answer. answer because you renewed your mind to the point where it has become second nature to you. It is a principle that you live by. It is a foundational uh, uh, principle in your life. So what we want to do is talk about this whole idea of managing, managing ourselves, ourselves. Okay. By the principles. By the principles. Amen. Why do we have to manage ourselves? Because we are a tripartite being. You are a spirit. You have a soul yes. and all that lives in a body. We talked a little bit about that last, um, the last program. And the soul is a lot of times what governs our lives. And that's why we have to renew our mind. Right, right. Okay. Because our soul houses our mind, our will, our intellect, and our emotions, that's right. our imagination. So we want to renew it so that it doesn't control us and cause us to act in ways that are against the principles of God. So we've been talking about renewing that mind, right. being transformed in that area so that we can have an abundant life. Amen. Yeah. And, and what, what we put down here was um, several versions of Romans 12 and 2. And if you, if I, I I'd like to read them yes. only because they give more and more insight into certain areas. And, um, and I'm sure that our viewers would really, really enjoy them. So, you know, I uh, love the class, the amplified classic. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. Romans 12 and 2, well, you, you know, it says, uh, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed and by the renewing of your mind that you may be able to, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And let's go down to Romans 12 and 2, the amplified classic. Do not be conformed to this world or this age. We can just start right there because this age brings language or more clarity to what this world means. Absolutely. So it's not just the fact that we live in, in the <laughs> earth and all these countries That's and stuff. Right. This age is, right. is referring to a time frame. A time frame. And time frames come with different mindsets. Right. Yeah. You're exactly right. 
And what that does is the, the age should not dictate to me. For instance, if I have on a blue shirt or have on a blue shirt today, if the age says I should wear a black shirt and I go put on a black shirt, the age has dictated behavior in my life. Right. Um, sometimes the, the time frame in which we live tells us things, we, we conform to those things, and the outcome of those things can be tragic. Right. In the 1960s and in the 1970s, and, I, and I'm not, this is no attack on any industry at all, but, but smoking tobacco was a sexy thing. The age. Of the late 60s, uh -huh, uh -huh. 70s. It was, a, it was a beautiful woman with a cigarette. It was a handsome man with a cigarette. It was a handsome man and a beautiful woman with a cigarette. And I, I actually got an opportunity to meet the Marlboro Man. Okay. I met him. And, but at some, the age brought in teenagers and older people and the, the idea that it wouldn't have an effect on you and it was cool and it was sexy. The age spoke to a generation. Because even one, one of the cigarettes was called cool. Right. Cool. Yeah. That's right. And they had, they, had, uh, they, they had some for teenagers. They had some for older people. They had cigars and other things for, for different groups. But the, the main thing is the age yeah. dictated that. And because we wanted to be cool, many people engaged this habit feeling as though there was going to be no ramifications. Yeah. And as a result, many people have had various forms of cancer. It's on the, it's on the car. Right, it's, right, on the, it's, right, on the, right. it's on the cigarette box. But my point is about the age. People were in it because this time frame indicates I'm cool. I'm with it. I got it because I have this. Uh, thing here in between my fingers. That's an example of what an age shaping will do to one's life. Right. Um, that's why we we can't we can't be shaped or guided or or spurred on by the age or the time frame in which we live. That the only thing that should be driving us is the is the renewed mind. The mind that was renewed by the word of God. You know, when you hear stuff like, oh, everybody's doing it. Right. That's this age. This age. age you know? Right. And and therefore you should be okay with it. Absolutely. That, that's this age. Okay, so let's keep going. Do not be conformed to this world, this age. Fashion. Fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial, superficial customs. customs. And that, that's powerful. Absolutely. External and superficial. superficial. So, so if, if my mind is renewed, I know that that thing that's a part of this age that is attempting to recruit me or shape me, I realize that a renewed mind has the overwhelming power to resist and push it back. Right. I don't, we're still talking about self-management. Mm -hmm. I don't have to conform. God have mercy. Right. I don't have to conform. Many people feel as though they don't have a choice in this. But I want you to understand that the age cannot overtake one whose mind has been renewed. You do not have to conform. You do not have to conform. But the resistance was that Paul uh, brought out here in Romans 12 and 2 is not intellect. It's right. not your physical strength. It's not how smart you are. The, the, the resistance to this and the power over this is a mind that is renewed in the word. You know, the first thing we can go back implicit in this paragraph or in this verse is you. Right. Who is he talking to? He's talking, he's talking to, you know, yes. you, he's talking to me. Right. So it's a command to who? It's a command to us. Right. So if he's saying you do not be conformed to this world, that means you have the power right. to either conform or, or not. not. Because mm -hmm. he wouldn't give you an order that you could not carry out. Exactly. The rest of this, Romans 12 and 2, uh, amplified, classic, but be ye transformed or changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideals and its new attitude, that's so that you may prove or for yourselves 
what is that what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you go honey so I want to go back to be transformed changed by the entire renewal of your mind right. not a part of it right right because what happens is people want to say oh well I did xyz right. Well, you did A, but there's a whole lot more to it. More Don't to stop it. with the process. It's the the entire renewal of your mind, so we'll not be, part of it. We'll be renewing our minds until we die. Exactly. There, there was no, there was never a point where we we have arrived. Right. I don't have to renew no more. I'm good. Right. So there is. So we'll be renewing. I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm no, sorry, no, it's honey. fine. But we don't. We'll be renewing our minds. So so the same way that a person realizes they'll renew their minds for the rest of their life. The same way with that kind of that kind of urgency and dedication must a brand new Christian or Christians renew their minds. They, we, we can't stay like we are. Right, oh, right. God. You get a new attitude and new ideas. Absolutely. And, the, and that's what the word is trying to give to you. Right. New attitude and new ideas. Then the last part of that, I don't know, there might be some other stuff you want to point out. I like that where it says, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you absolutely the specificity right. that God wants good things in your life. Right. He has a package that is dedicated just for you. Wow, that's not that was powerful. Just for you, yes, not for anybody else. He loves us that much, right? But the only way you're going to get that package that's just for you is if you do what renew your mind. So what you're saying to me is without my renewed mind, I don't know where my stuff is at. No. And and what happens is without renewing it, you go and you get something good and acceptable and perfect, but it wasn't yours. It was somebody else's. Right, right. And then you wonder why you're still not satisfied when because get, it wasn't the, what was right, designed right. specifically for you. So what you're saying is God has, has a life, uh, uh, a family, uh, a home, a ministry. Yeah. Uh, he has everything for me, but I can't I can't generally get to it without a renewed mind. Not without a renewed mind. If my mind is not renewed, I may walk in circles for years. And and the reason why, let's go back. Let's make all this this, this tie together. The reason why you can't get it without a renewed mind is because you will be gravitating towards things that's fashioned after and adapted to external and superficial customs of this Absolutely. world. So you get stuff. A lot of people have stuff. A lot of people have things that's quote good, that's acceptable, that looks wonderful, but they got it according to this age and this world. And so because their mind wasn't renewed to the things of mm. God, so they got stuff that looked good, but it wasn't the stuff that was good for them. So therefore they may be happy for a while, but at the end of the, at the, after a while, it wears out. You see where somebody gets something new in there, you know, a child, the child gets a new toy and they play with the toy for about a week or two. And then That's after right. that, they throw it away right. and they're dissatisfied. That's the way sometimes we act when we get stuff that's good and perfect and acceptable, but it's not what's good, perfect and acceptable for us because we get bored with it. And after a while we discard it and we're back to our unhappy state. That's why the Bible also says there's a way that seems right to a man, but at the end of China. is what death or destruction. Right, right. Why? Because there's stuff that's out there that's good, but it's not necessarily not your good. Right. Yeah. And you only get your good T when China. you renew your mind. Now, this is wonderful. Go back. Let me go back to the King James Version. Okay. Transferred by the renewing of your mind. Now, now it says, now watch this, that ye may prove mm -hmm. what is that good and acceptable. So the only way I will know what is good and acceptable and perfect for me is that my mind be renewed as so wonderful as wonderfully as mm -hmm. you just said it. I'm just getting behind you with the scripture. Yeah, yeah. You, you, um, I can't know right. what is good and acceptable and perfect except by the renewing of my mind. Right. That's why he says, renew your whole mind. Yes. He wants the whole mind renewed. The whole mind. Well, this is so much fun. This is wonderful. This is honey. really, really, really good stuff. Okay, I don't one, know. This I'm one is happy. the message Bible. Romans okay. 12 and 2. It, Romans 12, <laughs> 1 and 2 is the message. You do that one, honey. So here's what I want you to do. That, I mean, look how, how this comes across. This is for us. Right, right. You know, the word is, is just jumping off at the page. He says, so here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Okay, so... This is no knowing that God is in this. Take your everyday ordinary life. You're sleeping. 
eating, going to work, and walking around life <laughs> and place it before God as an offering. Mm. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Mm. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Mm. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. Wow. That is so powerful. <laughs> wow. I mean, so first of all, he's just talking about, he wants to get, look at this, take your everyday ordinary life. You're sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life. That, that's, what, that's what we are supposed mm -hmm. to have our mind renewed about. The everyday things that we do. God wants to be involved in the everyday things. And his principles address the everyday, everyday things. things. Amen. But for some reason, we've been molded and shaped in a fashion that we don't believe that the word addresses the everyday stuff. But he says your everyday mm. ordinary life. Mm. You know, you're sleeping, you're <laughs> eating, you're going to work, walking around life. So think about it. Okay. We should not be in the bed at night tossing about, talking about we can't sleep. Because God's word says he would give us what? Perfect sleep, sweet sleep. Where I have it. And then look in the word to find out what you have to do to get that kind of sleep. He addresses our eating habits. Right. Okay? He tells us, don't overeat. Don't be a glutton. Half of us sick. And miserable because we eat the wrong stuff. Okay? Find out what is the best thing to eat for your body. That's, if you dress this in, in the Word. You're going to work. Yes, he talks about it. Going to work. You are supposed to work. That's a principle. <laughs> okay? Really is, you know? <laughs> man don't work. It should he be. shouldn't eat. He talks about the <laughs> ant and the slugger. Okay, right. he talks a lot about going to work. It's yes. a principle. Right. So if you're laying at home and you never go into work, something is wrong with you. Right, right. And 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 it's not all. It's not about money. See, we have equated to work being about money. Work is about purpose. Right. Okay, and all of us have a purpose in this earth. As long as you are living and breathing on this earth, you have purpose. So you have work in you that you need to be doing. People are dying because they don't work. Right. Okay. Not, it's not about money. It's about when you work, you're fulfilling purpose. You have a reason for getting up in the morning and moving and moving around. Okay. For being here. So he addresses that. Your everyday walking around life, how you're supposed to act towards people, how you're supposed to treat people. So, I mean, this, this is, I love this amplifier. I mean, this is uh, the message too. My, my favorite version is still the amplifier. I got you. But the message version <laughs> is just like graphic. It brings it, <laughs> brings it to life. So he says he wants to be involved in that. That's right. what he's saying. That's right. And he says, take your life, that life, and place it right. in God's hand as an Teach offering. Her. Yeah. This is, this is fantastic. Look at this last part. Readily, readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Now, he makes a point. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity. This is, this is the Apostle Paul. Before there was social media, before... There was reality the, TV. In, was, <laughs> before reality TV, before soap operas, before any of these things that are, are, are tools to shaping culture today, he knew that culture would shape you. Right. And he knew that that the, the way to resist the shaping of the world around you is to have a mind that is renewed daily. God have mercy. Right. He knew that. How much, how many things do we change into? You have a, a set of clothes that you bought in 1969. You save them, you're the same size. Uh, in 1975, a new set comes out. Then in 1980, a new style comes out. 1985, another style comes out. By 1990, you're right back to what you was wearing. In Back 19, in 1960. Yeah, you're exactly I mean? right. So, so it's cyclic, and the devil can't create anything. So it's cyclic, and it's, it's, uh, it's a pattern of repetition. What we have to be able to do is not let the age dictate 
to our thinking, our feelings, our emotions, our anything. Because if we allow the age to dictate to us, then we become its instrument. You know, I love how it says, always dragging you down to always. his level of immaturity. Right. Look what he thinks. Well, look what, at what Paul thinks about the culture. Right. He says the culture, he says, is basically immature. Right, right. The Try culture me. of this age is immature. Mm. And it keeps us, if we allow it, in a state of immaturity. I want to share something with you. Do, uh, I don't want us to go beyond time, but I wanted to share something with you about Romans 12 and 2, and it's, it's, um, it's, it's shaping as Paul okay. uh, described that. Now, you remember when God, uh, in the book of Genesis, he took, he took the dust of the earth and he shaped the man. Yes. All right. Remember, Ezekiel and Isaiah discuss the devil or Satan at that time, discuss him as being one who wants to be like God. Yes. Right. For which he was thrown out of heaven down to the earth. Yes. His ultimate goal is that he shape us into his image. Right. That's his ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. Hence, all of these outlets that would, if we allowed it, take us away from God mm -hmm. and then reshape our minds. God have mercy. So since the enemy wants to reshape our minds, God over here is saying, Trans, uh, uh, change your mind, renew your mind, so that the enemy cannot shape your mind because his ultimate goal is to make us like him. Right. That's the devil's ultimate goal. Right. Because God's ultimate goal is that we be like him. Yes. So the enemy is trying with his manner to contradict an intention of God mm -hmm. concerning us. Mm -hmm. Hence, come over here, let me shape you. And in some dimensions, he uses things that seep into the culture that are designed to change a person right. from what they are to what Satan desires them to be. Right. Hence, the Apostle Paul says, don't let that happen. Don't let that happen. Amen. Because he is the, the, he's the God of this age. And gosh, you know, I, I thank you for, for doing that and pointing us back to the very beginning and how we got there. How we got here. Let's, ch let's check this out. If we have time, honey, you let me know. Okay. Psalm 11, Psalm 103, Three. 1 and 2, verses yeah. 1 and 2. All right, just read through that. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Now, if you look at this, when we say this, this scripture is so famous. You could just go anywhere <laughs> in almost any church in America and just stand up and say, I'm going to say something, and then I want you to repeat it. I want you to give me the rest of it and say, bless the Lord. And the whole church will say, oh, my soul. <laughs> now, if we look at this, now, remember, we're talking about principles. This particular show is focused on um, self-management, managing yourself, controlling yourself. Uh, having authority over oneself, not blaming the devil, the flesh, or the culture. Amen? So when we look at this, we, we see the psalmist telling his soul to do something. I, I understand where we've, right. how we've learned this, but the psalmist is saying to his own soul. Because he is spirit. He is a spirit. He has a soul. So the psalmist is saying to his own soul, to his em emotions, to his imagination, to his will, to his, his uh, intellect. Uh, intellect, he is saying to his own soul and its package, all of you bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. So, so the writer of Psalms 103 is showing us how to control or give our souls a command. Right. So our soul is subject to us. And should not run rampant. Right. Is that what we're saying here? Yeah. So, so in self-management and principles of self-management, Psalms 103 and verse 1 is, is a command to do something right. 
regardless of the state or the emotional state of one's soul. Right. This is what this is what I want to express to you because we give too much leeway. Oh, the, the Flip Wilson uh, to to all of my very old people <laughs> that's watching. Said, the, the Flip Wilson said the devil made him do it. it. The okay. devil didn't make Flip Wilson do nothing. Do you understand what I'm saying? We here. I want you to. I want you to see here. We have the authority to tell our emotions to, to be in control. So before you have a fit, before you scream at so-and-so and curse so-and-so out, you born-again believers have the authority to tell your soul to do something, to tell your emotions, calm down. We have that authority, and this text is showing it. Now watch it, verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. So now... I'm telling my imagination what to do or what to think about. Mm -hmm. You, soul, think about God's benefits. Right. So, so all of these things help keep me away from the culture of the age. But we brought this point out as we discussed the principles of self-management. We want you to know that you have power over your own soul. Right. Amen. And he does it twice. Verse one right. and verse two. In verse one, he's saying, you praise the Lord. Then he says, sit down. And then he says, um, remember what God has done for you. Right. So before I can become depressed because I didn't get what I wanted uh, this week, he says, you shut that up. God, make your soul remember God's benefits. Right. All right. Want to go to the next one? Sure. Let's Psalms to 11. 1 Psalm, through 3. Right. In the Lord put I my trust. How say ye to my soul? Free as a bird to your mountain. Now, now hold, hold, hold this. Let's look at that for a second. Okay. How many of you have ever wanted, had a dream, a vision, an invention, and you had that kind of thing, and before you knew it, someone came up to you and made you feel like you couldn't do it, and all of a sudden, their fear became your fear, and, and you're backing off all of your plans and your, your, your goals because now you're afraid because they're afraid. They communicated a fear to you. And then what happened was you accepted the fear. And when they told you the things that would go wrong, the fear said, I agree with that. But what he's saying now is, why are you telling my soul to, to be afraid of things? I'm afraid of nothing. Why are you telling my soul to be afraid of something? So the psalmist now addresses the one who would communicate fear to stop you from doing something you should have done. Wow, that's powerful. Verse 2. For lo, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow upon the string that they may privily shoot at the upright in heart. Verse 3. If the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? So verse 1, is he's, he's addressing the fear. Verse 2, he's explaining the fear. And verse 3, if, if, if I allow fear to take over me or anything in this age to dictate to me, I've lost my foundation. And then he concludes by saying, if the foundation be lost, what can we do? What can we do? What can the righteous do? Because we're built on truth. God have mercy. Amen. We are built on truth. But if I believe the lie, then my truth now is being shaken. So if my foundation of truth be destroyed, I'm going to be just like them. Right, right. Lord have mercy. You know what? Is it time? Yes, okay. we're out of time. So, so that, was, that was so powerful. I hate that we have to end there because that, that passage, Psalm 11, just us... We have to address the people around us. Yes, you do. And somebody was was trying to put somebody That's right. in fear. That's right. And they had to stop them and say, nope, you're not going to make me afraid. Because you're messing with my soul. Yes. So you got to recognize that. Don't let people put you in a posture of believing something that you should not be believing. Amen. Amen. All right. Time is almost up. We want to very quickly invite you to know Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. Please pray with us. Say, Lord, Lord, forgive me, forgive me for all of my sins. For all of my sins, I accept the blood you shed. I accept the blood that you shed on Calvary. On Calvary, I am your child. I'm your child. Wash me, cleanse me, wash me, me cl and cleanse me, and do something with my life. And do something with my life. I believe you died for me. I believe you died for me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you uh, prayed that prayer with us, 
um, please write us and let us know. Our contact information is on the bottom of the screen. We'd love to send you some information that will help you get started along your journey. But anyway, we are going to be continually, continually talking about the power of the principle and getting our soul in check. Amen. So please join us for another life-changing discussion on impacting your world with Ben and Joy. Enjoy your day. And remember that God, God designed, designed you for impact. impact.